Welcome back to my channel, the Black Carnivore. Um, well, this is the Black Carnivore podcast. I'm really excited to be here today with Janae, and um, she's got some amazing, amazing, uh, well, transformation stories, first of all, to share. She started doing keto back before it was keto, long before, you know, this whole thing started. Um, and she lost 70 pounds and did uh, just a phenomenal job in turning her weight around and her health around. But um, she also, I, I think probably from that, it sparked a, a you know an ongoing interest in making sure that she was eating the best quality uh, food that she could, and making sure that that was available for her family. And she has since gone on um, through working with her church, uh, trying to build a um, a farmers market so that you know her and her you know her fellow parishioners could have access to local quality affordable foods so um she's you know gone full steam ahead into the regener regenerative farming um industry and uh, i'm looking forward to hearing about that from her but um let's uh, you know sit back listen up listen to her story and um and let's you know get some education here all right on to you on to me okay <laughs> thank you for that that was a great introduction um, so just like you said, I mean, I've, I've been on this journey for a little while now, and it's um, interesting, when we were talking before, you know, you were, I mean, sometimes we try, just try to classify, you know, where are you at? Are you, you know, carnivore, are you keto? What are you, you know? Right now, I will classify myself as keto omnivore, squarely, right there. Um, it took me a little bit of time to put that uh, title on myself, because when I got started on this journey in 2013, it was only about just finding out what my body would be working optimally uh, with and why some of the things that were happening, um, I was going through a few um, changes that were unusual, they were different. And um, I have always been in such great control um, and I didn't understand you know, what was going on. And so I started on a journey to find out what was happening, um, what I needed to adjust and uh, looking into my experiences for the answers, but it wasn't coming up. Um, and I got some help from folks that I would call now as kind of mentors of mine and learned a lot about um, really just the sugar uh, being really invading every, every uh, food source that you could possibly think of, where I didn't really think about that. Um, I think for me, number one was, um, Number one was cleaning up my food. So, you know, those uh, where I was researching, it was more about sugar reduction, cleaning the food. I would say I began quickly to think about, and I have a science background, so I was thinking about how do I get scientists out of my food? So I wasn't thinking keto because back in 2013, people weren't talking about it. I was just thinking about what's best for my body on a biological level. And then I think even from my, just my faith perspective, I could draw on what's natural. What's natural? Well, what's natural to me was what's godly. What's been kissed by the sun? What came from the earth or what walked on the earth? Not anything ultra, um, ultra processed or even processed. So how could I get away from process? And just starting right there, it led me to a keto lifestyle without somebody telling me it was keto. Mm -hmm. It was easy to go there, you know, and then learning the, the uh, dangers and toxicity of sugar was huge. That was like, that was number one, because I first started to think about um, when I had food, like how much sugar was in it, you know, and I, I'm going to see if I can... How, how close to zero can I go with grams? Like, and so I got to um, a point where I would be in the store just talking to myself. Like if people were, were around, they'd hear me and I'm like, oh my God, that has that many grams of sugar. Like why, why, you know? And then, then I would just look at stuff that I had as a kid, you know, like Frosted Flakes. I'm like, that was like candy, what is going on? And um, I, so after that, I was like, challenging myself to be as close to zero as I could, but in a day, no more than 25 grams. Um, and I was able to do that. 
And so can I ask when, um, so when you were aiming to be as close to zero as possible, so that was added sugars. Um, did, right. Uh, wh what did you think about um, carbohydrates that say came from brown rice or, you know, whole wheat or? Out. Um, I kicked it out. So I didn't even think about added sugar. I was thinking about carbohydrates. Yeah, I went on so that. Level. That's that's pretty early to have been able to kind of make those connections of sugar and carbohydrates. So how you know? Yeah. How did you get to that? What, you know, oh. did you read something or where did you come up with that? Um, I was I I was I guess my personality can be a little extreme when I'm ready to go in on something and I'm and I'm and I'm ready to drive forward. I'm like I'm ready. How far can we go with this? Um, like my mentor, he was actually my chiropractor. Natural, um, natural, t you know, techniques and really thinking on uh, on a level of um, you know clean eating, but yet holistically with you know the the alignment, all of that. But um, you know, he asked me, you know, um, all right, so you you want to start with my practice? So um, on a scale of one to ten, like how driven are you for this? I'm like, is there a twelve? Cause that's where I am. I'm off the chart. So let's go. So for me, it wasn't about really making that connection. It was about, well, I know about sugars. I know about complex sugars. I don't want any of them. Let's see what that does. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that I knew it was just that I was trying something and I'm always up for trying something, even if it seems extreme. So I dropped grain 2013. I dropped grain completely rice. Didn't have any of that. Um, if I had carbs, it was going to be low glycemic vegetables, um, mm -hmm. low glycemic fruits, which what is that? Um, I think it was like um, strawberries. And since I was thinking clean, I wouldn't, I, I knew what the, you know, clean was it the clean 15, dirty dozen, like I knew the dirty dozens and I would not, you know, I thought about strawberries as like pesticide bombs. If you want to really get some dysfunction in your body, do that. Right. Mm -hmm. So I would only do clean strawberries, um, Granny Smith apples. That was it. You know, they're not super sweet. Um, and I didn't do really much fruit um, at all, but I did those sometimes blueberries. Uh, so wait, sweet. how would you define clean strawberries? I mean, if somebody's looking for that today, what does that mean for them? Oh, um, well, well, if I define anything as far as clean, um, ideal the ideal standard is regenerative you know strawberries that were grown from really good soil a farmer that's really thinking about the soil being good never spraying you know animals you know uh, uh, massaging that soil you know and, and the strawberries coming up from really good ground that is clean and it's highly nutritive Mm -hmm. and what you know what better can we have than something that's going to actually give back to our bodies um, as opposed to conventional strawberries, which would be genetically modified, sprayed, you know, um, uh, um, it, it, you don't want science in your food, like I was saying earlier. And I learned that that was one of the first things that I thought, how do I get away from GMO? I didn't even know about regenerative at that time in 2013. So what I chose was just organic at that time. I knew so it sounds like it sounds like you had a major mindset shift about how you were going to look at food, and you know you you decided you wanted something that is you know totally whole and natural, and that that was going to make all the decisions about what you then had. Um, yes. I've never talked about regenerative farming on uh, this channel, so if you don't mind, okay. could you just um, define it for everybody? Because I, I don't, I'm not sure I even know really what it means. Wow. I mean, there are definitely experts and folks that know a lot about it and work with, work with regenerative farmers or are regenerative farmers. But, you know, being that I get my food, you know, most of my food from um, regenerative farms, whole foods, meats, my meats, definitely meats are coming from there. Um, vegetables would be coming from there. I get upset if I can't get my vegetables from there because I just know too much about conventionally or even organic vegetables that are in the grocery store and just how much has to be done for them to travel across the country to get to your store is not natural. And so like 50% of it is not as dense. And, and the, the main thing with regenerative farming is that you are then again, um, 
allowing the soil, the so soil is very rich, you know, it's like when we were kids and we would dig into the soil, it was just like rich, it was good, you know, you could smell it, you know, it, it just, it had everything that you need, um, you know, you don't need to supplement magnesium, you don't need to supplement calcium, you don't need to supplement phosphorus, you don't need to supplement anything that your body actually needs. Um, we don't we don't have to deal so much with probiotics and all of these things that are so um, so um, you know they're marketed so heavily to us. But you know our soil is now void of that because of of, of technology and innovative practices. But regenerative farming, they are using animals to make sure that the soil. Well, first of all, animals that are treated well. They're getting um, their, it's a cycle of life. You know, they're getting their, their food from the ground that they are fertilizing themselves. It's not coming from a bag from Bayer. You know, it's not fertilizer from a bag. It's not feed from a, a place. Now that's ideal. That's like up to here. And you know, a lot of people might look at that like, how do I get that? It's just about, for me, it's from 2013, my journey to 2020, it's been about, taking control over my life, realizing nobody's going to take care of me, not looking at a doctor to save me and to, to um, help me with, you know, anything that's happening. It's taking accountability and it's doing my own, home, own homework, doing my own research. And I realize that's the only way you can really survive here in America is you've got to take control over your own health and your life. Nobody's really going to care about it as much as you. So I just did my homework and I just learned. I started to, um, to find some, some um, resources and I learned that regenerative was like, oh, the, the, the gold standard. But I mean, it took me a few years to figure that out. But in the meantime, I certainly was better off going from, I did, I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to detox. I used to use veganism as a fasting tool because that's what it is, it's a fast. You can't get anything from that in long term. And I would go vegan, and then I would stop and eat junk, you know, drive through a drive through. We've got this place down south called Bojangles. I used to think that that was so yummy, right? It was so toxic. <laughs> it was, I mean, yeah. you will feel it. But you know what I learned? You don't even know what you feel until you stop feeling, you know, crappy. You don't know what you really feel like. And getting to the place where I just took away all of that, that yuck, you know, that bad food, that processed food, going to getting to the place where I was just eating clean, I blanked myself out, and then I could easily feel when something wasn't right, you know, and I, um, so it, it took, it was a number of things. I, I hope I'm not going too, too far. Um, no, no, past, not at all. But, so, um, but just to, to clarify, so regenerative farming is not just, it doesn't mean organic per se. Um, cause you know, now you can go to any, any grocery store and pick up something that's labeled organic, but you're right. talking about where, you know, you have, instead of, you know, tilling the soil with like a tractor or whatever, you've got animals that are turning over the soil and you've got, um, far, I mean, um, fields that are, uh, you know, you're switching which crops are growing and you're doing things that are actually allowing the, the soil to have the nutrients in it that the plants and animals absorb, which then become available to us to eat. And this is what I guess there's talk about, um, you know, a lot of our soil being magnesium depleted. And this is why, because it's, we've been, you know, constantly like, planting and, and extracting from the soil and not putting back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's how close to nature are we? It's like, you know, I think about black people and I think about slavery, right? Like what, did, what kinds of choices do we have? Not a lot, but you know, some, I, I think about how today we're so full of innovation, but like, like a Harriet Tubman say, how could she make the journeys she made? on the nasty food we eat right now. She couldn't do it. Everything that she ate was natural. I mean, it was, it was, it was grown, you know, nobody sprayed it. Nobody uh, um, did some kind of fancy um, scientific um, manipulation on the seed of it. This is what they do right now. And it's so, 
impactful for our health and that and I, and I feel like for especially for, for black people like we really need to think about that African Americans need to be aware of, of how we are um, how we are like boxed into a situation in our you know neighborhoods and and, and, and what's what is accessible to us and the, you know the deserts that we're in what's around you is that the best mm -hmm. food? Not at yeah. all, not at all. But they, as slaves, had food that was better, allowed them to be better equipped for the treacherous work that they were doing. And yet here we are, you know, as a people that are dealing with so, like we have a certain percentage in the, the slice of, you know, the American uh, uh, demographic. Yet, you know, we have to deal with every disease uh, being higher uh, possibility for us to contract than any others. Why is that, right? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. and that's the thing, kind of thing that I think about um, what it, it all comes down to is how good is the food that we eat? We can only be as strong and as healthy as the food that we're eating. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not all so hereditary, <laughs> which is what we like to fall back on. I mean, yeah, it, oh, none of it is, you know, right. it's the food. And I actually put the question once to um, my cousin, like, you know, I mean, we always hear, oh, but, you know, cake is so good or chocolate is so good. And I was like, you know, is it really like, do I think that sugar tastes good because it does or because I think that, you know? And I've started to kind of unpack that thought, um, you know, and I, I came across a study that was, um, it was about mice that were, they were trying to figure out if, um, you know, I, I guess if the mice could make decisions that were uh, about what to, to eat based off of like mineral deficiencies. So they created mice with a taurine deficiency and then they offered them like uh, water with taurine with like, a lavender flavor and then water without the taurine and then you know um but it was something that that was attractive to the the mice beyond just the taurine and then they started offering the mice water that was lavender flavored without the taurine and they still went for it so somehow they made this connection between somehow feeling better by taking in this nutrient that they needed and the lavender so now it's just like a thing you know, and mm -hmm. I, I started to think, I wonder if that's kind of what's happened to me, you know, like sugar has a huge impact on your brain. And I wonder if, you know, I just haven't come to associate that taste with that feeling good and, you know, and now it's cemented. So I don't know, yeah. you know, it's just, it's a curious thought. And um, so I think it's really interesting that you really started to dive in on this thought about what, um, you know, what these foods mean to you, what foods are better for you. And you had such a mindset shift that you, I mean, I'm sure at some point, maybe you had a little something here and there, but you seem to have like, you know, done an about face and pretty solidly. And like, it's part of your, your whole, you know, way you look at the world now, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, um, you don't know what you don't know, right? I, the, I actually went to a talk and I thought I knew it. I thought I knew what I needed. Like, you know, I had just explored so many avenues regarding foods. So, you know, I, I was always curious. This wasn't the first time I was curious. I just thought I knew. And then I heard something else. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think even at that time I had a chip on my shoulder. Like, what, what is this person going to tell me that I don't already know? Like, I, I think about it now and I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I did, but I really thought that I knew. And then when I heard something different, I was like, yes, this is, this is so good. Let's do it. And then, I, then that just allowed me for the, it was a total about face because I felt differently. You know, when you feel differently, you, first of all, you've got to be committed because you got to give it time. Like you can't give it a couple of days, you can't give it a couple of weeks. Just, you know, I, I say like, give it 30 days, right? But by that time I was hooked. And like you said, sugar's effect on the brain. First of all, it's about getting unaddicted. I don't think I really realized that as much until I started doing 25 grams of carbs all together and having that yearning and that craving. And I was like, ah, oh, but my, my, my um, tenacity was up to here. So it really didn't matter. I was like, I don't care because I don't feel well. 
and I don't have diagnoses and I don't need one. I just know that I don't feel well. And then over time I started feeling well. And I'm like, well, if it's pizza or feeling well, I'm going to choose feeling well. How about that? Yeah. Because yeah. at this point it wasn't about weight. Like people get so well, it's kind of like, do I want to feel well now or do I want to feel well now and tomorrow? (laughs) That's kind of the question for me with the pizza. It's like, because I'm going to feel good eating a slice of pizza for 20 minutes and then, you know, (laughs) it's all downhill from there. All downhill from there. And then some of those symptoms, it's like, I mean, I'm talking about, it's not, you know, it's not like just weight, right? When I got rid of wheat, when I got rid of the nasty fat. You know, those those containers of gold and nasty junk, yeah. corn oil, canola oil, I don't care. Oil, if it's if it looks oily and you cannot attribute a a, a a corn on the cob turning into that kind of oil, you know, that it's like the worst processed stuff you could ever eat, and your body's gonna tell you that. Like that was one of the major things. Inflammation, I think a lot of when I look back at the some of those pictures. A lot of what I was dealing with was inflammation. A lot of it was because of the bad oils, but then it was the grains. Grains for many, many, many reasons. And so when I blanked myself out, meaning like I got rid of that stuff long enough time to really feel, oh my God, the energy hit the roof. And and then fats became like, I, I, I describe it as like kindling on the fire. Like I would go into work and have to just talk to myself like, Cause I was like ready to roll, you know, it was like, if I, and I would fuel with that, like I, you know, I could bring like uh, MCT oil or, you know, like I, I bring something to, and at that time, way back, I didn't even know what MCT oil was, but I would like just have like, um, this was, the, this to me was my benefit of, of having that omnivore part of me because I, I found that fat could be broader for me. Um, but I've uh, definitely learned to incorporate like suet and tallows and lards and oh, just an mm-hmm. amazing palette of fats that was fueling. Like it brought a, a energy, you know, to me beyond what yeah. I had known. So one slice of pizza would like bring me down, and then I would notice something like I would get stuffy because grain is so dirty. Um, and so, um, so provoking within the body, um, and inflammatory that I would start to get stuffy. I'm not even used to being stuffy. I don't get headaches. I don't, I rarely get colds. Like all of these things, it's, it's not by chance. It's just cleaning the food, cleaning the food yeah. tubes. Yeah. So tell me, um, if you don't mind, what were some of, what, how were you eating before and what were some of the health issues you had? And then what did you find resolved as you started changing the way you ate? Yeah. Because a lot of, a lot of women listen to this, a lot of women in our age uh, group and really, you know, this is, uh, this is what um, they're, you know, looking for a lot of healing and it's really helpful to hear. So go ahead. All right. Yeah. So first of all, I celebrated 50 years in April. So, you know, that's where I am right now. And when I started my uh, journey, um, my body told me to start it. Um, And that was when I was uh, 43 in 2013. Oh, um, it just, I used to run and, you know, and I was in martial arts and it was like, I don't know, it wasn't like one day, but it just, um, just everything that I was doing stopped working. I I don't really know. Um, It was a lot of um, uh, detox detox stuff. Like I did a just eat standard, then detox. Eat standard, then detox. If it was eat standard, then go on a fast. Or eat standard, then do vegan diets for like a month or, you know, whatever. I did that all throughout my 20s and 30s. So that was just the way that I lived. It was like be standard and then detox. Mm-hmm. And, and I learned, you know, after the 2013 journey began, you don't need to detox if you don't live a toxified life. Right. Don't de- if you find yourself detoxing, then mm-hmm. think about you know, the fact that you're toxifying. <laughs> like, do we really want to toxify? So, I mean, I wasn't, I was just not thinking about my food in any particular way. I, I thought like everybody else, it's like vegetables are healthy, you know, I th- just from 
growing up, you know, eat your vegetables. And I, I don't think I ever really cut down on meat. I didn't never thought I never vilified meat. Um, but it was all about, you know, my mom told me be balanced, you know, balance with your starches and your vegetables and your meat. And then I would go off the rails and like have some fast food and, you know, whatever. And then I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling so good. So then I would go vegan. And, you know, a veganism can yeah. make, it's a fast. I mean, just think about it that way. It's not going to equip your body with everything that it needs. You're going to soon start to lose your energy and lose your mind a little bit. You get foggy and you're not going to repair because you don't, you're missing so many nutrients. But I, but I would do it and it would work. And it works for anybody that tries a short term, right? not long term. But I, I don't know. I could never, I never lasted very long on it. I, you know, just never could get it together. So yeah. And I, you know, I lived, oh. <clears throat> I lived in Amsterdam for um, three years. And at the time that I first went, it was, uh, you know, we were sort of on the end of the mad cow, um, you oh, know, wow. thing. So like everyone was afraid to eat beef and, um, you know, and so when I got there, I was like, oh, I can't eat beef. But you know, I would kind of get to the point, like every six weeks, I was like, I cannot go another day without beef. I have to have a hamburger. Wow. And so I would go to the Hard Rock Cafe, which was, um, you know, I don't know why I thought that maybe this would be safer, <laughs> safer beef to eat, but I just ate it because I was like, I, I don't care. I cannot go another day without it. Um, and uh, the lamb, I had lamb too, but um, you know, I wasn't a very good cook, so it's not like I had lamb chops or anything like that in my house. So I mostly ate vegetarian, and then I ate meat when I was out. But beef was not as, you know, it's not as accessible in Europe. I, I don't know, for some reason, like lamb is just more common and more um, affordable. So, okay. uh, but, you know, periodically, I was like, I have to have beef. And so I know for me, like, I, you know, the whole vegetarian thing was not really working, and vegan just out of the question yeah I, it's, it's, I go three four days and that was about all i could do <laughs> it's interesting because your body tells you yeah your body tells you you know you know what you need your body's like give me a nice juicy burger or ribeye or something now or else yeah and you just have to listen to what your body is saying i mean if you're if you are paying attention and you know you're eating clean and you're not eating you know real toxic stuff because your body will ask you to do bad things if you if you were that's your lifestyle and um just something popped in my mind from what you were saying about um sugar and like the desires for it and like that cake is what one thing that i learned also within my journey is that i'm not alone on this journey i am taking care of a gut that will boss me around so you start to eat you know, like I call it the, the you know, donut eating, pizza eating, you know, folks that like, that's what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. You've got a gut that has living, living organisms in it that are, that are trained to, to receive that. And they are controlling and if you don't, you know, that's so it, interesting that you say that because everyone talks about the gut as being like a second brain and that like things like candida, you know, can cause you to have more cravings as they force you to give them the food that they need, which is such an interesting concept. What do you think about that? It's absolutely real. It's, I've, you know, just read a number of things about it. And I think, um, you know, even, even in just going through the keto journey and realizing what I was doing was called keto eventually and starting to read up on that, um, you know, learning about candida and just how it can control you if you're eating the wrong things. You don't want that adventitious growth in your body that's making you, driving you to a negative place. You've got to grab the reins to take control again, but it is painful in the beginning to do it. And that's why it doesn't feel good. It's like, you got to give yourself a chance because it's not just you. It's like, it's addiction in the brain. You know, it is also your gut is now turning over. You know, it's like you have this dysbiosis, but then you start to give it something new and different. And then as you begin to, your body starts to work with you. And that's why things start to feel better. Your body responds. Um, it's um, it, a lot of it is in what you're choosing. So mm -hmm. in the beginning, it's what that's what makes it difficult. 
I mean, it is like, so how was your transition? Like how long did it take for you? And what did you feel after? I mean, once you finally came out, what, what, how did you feel? Hmm. I don't think it took that long. I think a lot of it was because of my mindset and hope. For me, I was driven by hope. Like literally within like a month, I went to Disney world with my daughter, Disney world. Oh my gosh. I will never forget that. I was so, this, this to me helped me to see just how motivated I was for it. I bought food to Disney World. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to entertain any of that. I was like on point, you know, we were at this beauty and the beast restaurant and I was like looking at through the menu, like, I can't have any of this, you know? Um, I just remember that, but, but it, but it was a lot. That was mindset. That was yeah totally mindset and then I think my with my mindset being the way that it was within just a, within just a couple of weeks I could feel differences so the transitions were meeting me where I need where I was and um, I, I, I was also seeing things happen you know like your question about um, you know what what kinds of things were you seeing along the way it's like within a couple of months I could definitely see some weight loss but I could also see you know how um, inflammation coming down like you know you start looking at your face like oh okay that's different um even when weight wasn't coming off i could see some changes i could feel my energy change um, my skin start i was having like eruptions on my on my face and thinking something uh, like a facial or putting certain lotions or whatever on my face would make that change and you know maybe for a minute it would but um i had never ever had a problem with my face um so but i noticed it was like um some things just happened and i didn't even realize it until maybe months later and i'm like oh my god my face is so smooth again you know and i'm like there we have it another thing was um i used to have like stuffiness like all the time and I, I don't even know if my left nostril ever really worked. <laughs> um, I, but now, you know, it's like I'm clear both ways. Um, that was just a strange little thing. Um, but there were there were a lot of things. I, I would go for like a year and just be like, I haven't had a cold all year, you know. Yeah. Um, and um, what I attributed it to, it's like I think about it, I know I was doing these things until I was 43. Like, why did it hit me? I, I don't know, but for, but here's what I think. I think that after a while, your body just doesn't put up with it anymore. After you get to a certain age, it's like it it's a cons- it's consistent fighting. You know, um, the body's graceful and it and it gives back to you and it fights for you. But I think after a while, your system just stops fighting as much and and gives way to you. You know, this is what you want to do. And this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. I mean, that's why I try to tell people, don't confuse youth with health. You know, when we're youthful, our bodies are resilient. Um, and as we get older, they, you know, after a lot of damage, they become less resilient. So yes. just because we do things when we're young and it appears that it's not damaging, that's not necessarily the case. So, yeah. So, you know, I'm kind of like, I don't know, people are... People are always like, oh, you know, like, it's okay if the kids have this, like, they're thin. And I'm like, you know, that's not really, that's not the really issue, you know. And um, I don't know, I I have to say, uh, another friend of mine sent me a picture on um, Instagram. It was like a post of a baby having its first taste of ice cream. And um, I don't know if you've seen this, I'm sure it's been around a million times, but the baby, like, takes a lick and then her eyes went and she like grabbed the whole ice cream and is like shoving it in. And I was like, yeah. you know, everyone's laughing at that. And I'm thinking we're watching, you know, an addict. People yeah. Are. Like yeah. that's just what happened. And that's really sad. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't know. I, I want to remind myself and, and everybody else that, you know, youth is, is great until it's gone. And, um, <laughs> and what you said, what is too, cause people think about, uh oh they're skinny so they're all right i'm like when did that become the main indicator and then especially since black people we're not 
naturally going to be like string bean skinny. That's not necessarily what's going to happen. Okay. But what about your health? Like kids right now, their mind is not okay. They are, they can't focus. They've got behavioral challenges. They're estrogen dominant. They've got problems. My, you know, it's like for my daughter, like this summer particularly, I'm, ha I'm having some challenges because she's gonna be a senior next year. And so she's been trained since she was younger on how to eat the best possible way. But she spends her time more with her friends. I want her, I wanna see her able to do that and making better, better decisions. But I know it's like when she's not back in here, um, if she goes to spend the night and I don't see her for a day, which I, I'm okay with as long as we have that agreement. I'm like, what is she eating? What's she eating? Is she all in GMO? Because to me, I'm like, you, if you start doing that and eating GMO sugar, pull, pulling grains in, doing everything, you're going to be just like everybody else. You need to be able to be a spokesperson for your generation because these kids are sick. They have, yeah. they have issues. You know, uh, females have problems with their period. Their cycles are off. It's, it's like overwhelming. There's migraines. There's skin problems. There's attention deficit disorder. We didn't, asthma. We didn't have all that when we were, you know, coming up. It's starting early now. So, oh, they're skinny. They're whatever, you know. So it's like when I'm talking to teens, I'm like, Let, yeah, come on, let's talk. What's well, so many on? of those symptoms are, you know, so compartmentalized that, you know, we don't really think of those as being, having anything to do with diet. And, you know, when I was a kid, like I did have, you know, horrible cramps. Um, I had uh, yeast infections pretty frequently. And, um, and then I had asthma and eczema, um, which got worse in, you know, later in life, but, you know, we're, we're still evident at the time. And like, yeah. You know, somebody had said to me, hey, you know, this all has to do with, you know, this thing that you're eating. Like, I might have taken that seriously, but, you know, I didn't think that those things, I just thought, you know, you're just kind of born with this stuff. So yeah. I might, I might have made a different decision about like, you know, chocolate and, and cake had I really understood, but, you know, there you go. We I mean, know. I wish it could be like, well, obviously that is this i wish it could be because people look at you like if you say it you're not it's not a welcome thing or they'll say oh we're totally fine oh I, you know i think that's great the way that you choose to eat but we don't have any problems but if you delve into that yeah. the problems are so accepted and it's just normal to have like ibuprofen in your purse and walk around and pop it like candy yeah that's yeah. not normal you know, something is unnatural about what you're fueling yourself with. And there's really nothing more intimate and special than to think of carefully about how you take something into yourself. It's almost like a self-love, you know, it's like, what, mm -hmm. what am I, what am I bringing into my own body? I know when I'm misbehaving and I know my consequences when I do it. I know. And I, and I think like a lot of people don't necessarily think because they're not thinking of it that way. Yeah. Well, I think it's helpful to kind of, you know, what, what I like to do is sort of run through all the things that have improved for me, because I don't think that, like we were just saying, like people don't always recognize that some of these things are diet related. So, you know, when I, I say to people, you know, not only the blood glucose uh, improving and my asthma going away and eczema and allergies going away and no more yeast infections and uh, brain frog going away, no more aches and pains, plantar fasciitis gone. Like, you know, when you run through the litany, you know, almost everybody's got one of those things on the list, but, <laughs> right. you know, and then they probably have more. So um, why don't you run through a few of the things that, um, you know, that resolve for you so that other people can hear that? Yeah. So, you know, just um, to add to the list. So I was um, talking about the weight loss, you know, going down um, 70 pounds, um, you know, skin complexion clearing. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned energy. I think you said uh, energy, energy level brain fog. That's what it was. Oh, you get clear. You get clear because your brain actually loves fat. 
And it doesn't so much like sugar, actually, it starts to take your memory, your, 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 um, you can't be sharp anymore. You can't, it's hard to think when your brain is on sugar. Um, yeah. uh, definitely energy um, and inflammation down. Um, let me think, let me think, let me think. Uh, yeah, plantar fasciitis, that, that's an interesting one. Um, but I had also the clarity within my um, breathing. And I just, it's like, I don't ever like to say I don't get sick. I do not like to say that. I don't like to say that. Um, but I mean, the truth is I, I just don't really deal with it as much as I did. Like get, yeah. even getting just a common cold, it's, you know, not, and, the, the, and the confidence in knowing that Sugar is a precursor to all of those diseases, cancer, diabetes, uh, I mean, you know, just pretty much every morbidity, you know, whatever sugar is like the beginning. You can, you can feel better and more confident about your future knowing that you're making this decision. Um, and I like to think about it from like even a cellular level which people don't typically think about, but mm -hmm. if you think that when you're eating, you're giving your cells the raw materials to, that are sh as strong as they possibly can be to build you up. I actually think about that when I start eating junk and I'm messy, then I think, oh, I'm, I'm just, uh, right now I'm allowing my body to, to formulate some real radical uh, cells and uh, you know, uh, components that are going to mm -hmm. disrupt my cells. Like your whole cell is made out of like this great fat. So if you give yourself good fat, you're going to be strong. Like literally, I, got, I, I remember my, like I said, one of my, one of my mentors is that, that chiropractor and I got into a car accident, 16 year old just slammed into me, into my door, like a T-bone. Um, she went through a red light, slammed into me hard. And I literally was taking inventory of my body after that. And I did not, I didn't have to go to the, I turned down the ambulance. Um, I went back to my chiropractor. He adjusted wow. me and I recovered from that pretty, pretty well. Like I had a couple bruises, let's put it like that. But when you look at my car, the car was completely cold and she had smashed. I had to like practically cut my clothes out of the door. And um, wow. I think about that and I think yeah, I made of some strong stuff. Like, I don't do this for nothing. Like it, it really, you know, he was like, he's the one that put that in my mind, you know, because I didn't even think about it. He's like, you know, you're good. And part of it is because for years you have been fueling yourself with these, you know, great proteins, great, you know, any, if it's going to be carbs, it's going to be good, good fats. And it's helping your cells be stronger. It makes you, it constructs you as a stronger, more durable person. So I yeah. didn't come into this with disease because I always thought about that. Like, what can I do to be optimal? I just didn't have that, I missed that, I had a missing link. And then that after hearing some of the things that were told to me at that one workshop or seminar clicked and I got my link and I ran with it because I don't want to have any, you know, major things I want to know what it is to live a long life, strong. You know, I, told, I tell my daughter, I want to be like 120 and yeah. running on the beach after my grandchildren. <laughs> and that's great, great that. grandchildren. <laughs> that's it. She, she hates when I tell And it. then just drop dead, uh, you know, drop. one day. Like no long, painful illness, <laughs> all of that. Yeah, yeah, totally. Running on the beach. <laughs> So tell us a little bit, like, what does your actual food look like in a day? Like, what do you eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner? Do you fast? Like, what, what are your favorite types of foods to have? What do you think? Ooh, okay, so if I were going to design, and I won't say that in a day, it would be all of this, but let's just say breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I do pay, pay attention to my satiety. Yeah. Um, I pay attention to that and, you know, when I'm hungry, I just want to make sure that I have food available because that's, I think, a dangerous time is when you're really hungry and nothing's there. Um, but I, in the morning, so I, if I'm going to think about high fat, I love my regenerative eggs that I get from my um, CSA, which is called Farm to Fork Meat here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And 
um, I would get a couple of those. Um, I might, um, so some of the things that I like, I like us putting a little extra oil. Um, I'll, I'll, I'm total butter. Like I'm a butter fanatic. I don't have problems with butter. Some people have some, you know, allergic things going on. I do not. I'm grateful. So healthy amount of butter. Like literally I make, may make those eggs, put it on a plate, drizzle that butter on top. Um, uh, put a, maybe a few microgreens, slice up a, a few avocados, get some regenerated bacon. Oh, if I'm super happy that morning, I've had a couple of slices of regenerative bacon with that. Um, mm -hmm. Literally like drizzle a little bit more oil on the top of the um, microgreens on, on top of the eggs and put a little sea salt. I am in heaven with that, a couple slices of avocado and a fat tea. So I love tea. I'm a big tea person. I try not to to um, uh, uh, diminish my ability to feel my own natural energy with like coffees and like um, caffeine because mm -hmm. I think that that's how do you know how you feel if you have that? I, I, for me, um, it's not really been such a positive experience to be have uh, caffeine. So I try to have certain teas. Sometimes it'll be And did like, you say um, fat tea? Like, do you add yeah, fat, fat to tea. it or? So I just, so I would, let me think. So sometimes it'd be like ginger peach or something like that, some kind of herbal tea like that. And then I would um, put coconut cream, like, you know, just the coconut. Mm -hmm. um, I get organic, sometimes organic coconut in a can, um, not the carton because it's processed, over processed. Right, right. Um, and would take like the cream off the top and just put it um, generously into my tea. If I wanted a little sweetness, put a little bit of stevia in it. Uh -huh. And it just was more fuel for the fire. I think that's the most important um, meal because that gets me going. Um, right. Gets me going. And then, you know, from there, I mean, I, I think ribeye is always just a wonderful thing to have thought at the end of the day uh cause always that, <laughs> that I like you know just kind of like getting it nice and seared on both sides and with a, with plenty of tallow cooked with tallow and um and and I might just put you know some mushrooms or you know whatever around that but oh that's some good stuff right there nice okay so you might do that for lunch and or dinner or or what if I have that available for lunch, especially that I think the the COVID situation has allowed um, for better eating because I don't if I'm if I don't prepare my food before I go to work, um, I'm working from home now for a number of months. So if I it's whatever I have thought, right? You know, so if I have like a ribeye thought, but it, but the thing about it is that uh, my daughter and I are here. We I typically don't thaw ribeye cause it, uh, because I'm only going to be able to make it for myself in between meetings or whatever. So I would do that probably for dinner, but she would be mad at me. That's why she would want yeah. the ribeye too. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, all right, let me just, yeah. you know, so we might have some um, thaw, some uh, burger, some ground beef. Um, I love the regenerative like uh, sausage, bulk sausage, or just bulk pork and just season it to you know with some fennel or you know whatever and yeah i'm good with just the meat because the what i think is that carnivore is the ultimate healing um i hate to say diet but it's just the way of life uh if you're if you choose carnivore you're gonna heal like you're gonna heal mm -hmm. and for me if, if i feel like something is a little off i'm going for the meat but when I'm feeling like just fine, there are some vegetables that I know the anti-nutrients don't bother me. You know, like I, broccoli works very well for me. Um, mushrooms, um, microgreens, you know, some microgreens. Are, uh, well, where do you stand on mushrooms? Because they're not from the plant kingdom. They're from an entirely different kingdom. Ah. The, you know, the fungi, I mean, there's the yeah, fungi yeah. kingdom, a plant, and then animals. So they're actually not from the plant kingdom. That's I point. hate mushrooms, so I don't eat them, but I, other carnivores do. I, so mm -hmm. I don't know if you're, if you're good with them, you know, have at it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. good with them. Yeah. So, you know. Also we, like algae is, I think algae is part of the fungus kingdom, right? Um, or it's, or it's its own kingdom too. That's not plant and not animal. 
Um, so things like spirulina and chlorella, um, those are algae, not um, plants, technically. Ah, I get a free pass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, in any event, um, so that's really, that's really interesting to hear uh, that you say that. And did you say um, you do some intermittent fasting or, or, you know, straight up fasting or do you not do that right now? Um, I kind of took a break on that. Um, I kind of got into some heavy uh, long-term fasting for a minute and I had a lot of success over the years with that. And then I think last summer I did a little damage. It was, um, it was over a week. I'd say it was like 12 days straight, you know, something like that where I've done it before. It wasn't like I was a stranger to that, um, but it just didn't do well. And I can't really explain. I had um, challenges and I don't know if it was just something deep, that was um, released that needed to, that are, you know, part of like a real deep cleanse or whatever. But I, I, I'm kind of thinking that it wasn't because I, I just didn't feel like I recovered well from it. I didn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So I have taken a break from doing too, too much fasting, but intermittent, I feel, I, I haven't, I've done that over the years and it's been extremely mm -hmm. successful like i had mm -hmm. a window that worked really really well for me uh, mm -hmm. so well what i can say for myself is that i've learned that and i think this is for most people my circadian rhythms mm -hmm. are so critical right now for me like to be able to be sure that i eat during the day and don't eat when the, when the sun starts to go down it's like just cut it off um, I find that my body gets really messed up when I, when I eat at night, like when it's dark. Um, mm -hmm. So um, that was huge for me. Uh, but my window tended to be like towards the end of the day. And I felt that that worked well for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I have had experience with intermittent fasting and I think it, it does do a great, great job in helping me to, you know, to just feel more energy like the next day even. Um, long term, kind of put the brakes on that for a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's cool. Um, and so the, the, well, the last question I'd like to um, ask is about the, uh, the um, farmer's market that you're putting together with your church. And if anybody else who's listening would like to organize something like this within their own church, like what would you recommend, like how to get started and and what was the reception like? Are the other parishioners like really excited about it? Or was, you know, was it a little bit hard to get people moving on it? What were your thoughts? Yeah, so what I would say, it, first of all, you have to have leaders with a heart for it. And that's, we started with that. It came from the top down, of course, for me, that was just amazing. Um, I, I do feel like I have a strong, pretty strong relationship with my leaders, I, I just, you know, adore them. Uh, first of all, where I, where I, you know, worship is called Raleigh North Christian Center in um, Raleigh, North Carolina, and um, it's the, uh, the Chapman, so Dr. Jeff, Jeff and Sandy Chapman, um, and they have health as like one of the top um, uh, values, you know, for the community for them, and so with that, they created a ministry called the Healthy Lifestyles Ministry. Um, that was created, I believe, in like 2016. Um, I couldn't join that fast enough. Um, I'm not the lead, but I'm a sub-lead of that ministry. And that really came from their heart. So I think it starts with having leaders that are all for it. You've got to have that. Um, and they, they had some clear-cut um, goals in mind to make it so that people could see us as an oasis of health and like a uh, really just balanced life health being one of them like i'm i am a life coach with health as primary that's one of the things that that i do um, health is primary because how do you have a good life and your health is broken and you know for them they, they're really all about balance you know from spiritual emotional physical level for, for that for themselves their family and the community and 
So that's number one. You gotta have leaders. And, and so I'm, I hate to interrupt again, but I, I gotta ask, um, you know, a lot of times that churches talk about health and so on, but then you go to the repass after, um, the service and, you know, <laughs> and you know what it is. So yeah. did that change at your church? Was there like really, uh, a, a, you know, a, a real significant change in how people thought about food and, and have that reflected even at the lunch <laughs> after service? Well, yeah, so um, we, we do have a hospitality team and I think it takes time. What, the way that I'll put it is it does take time. If you have a big ship and you want to steer to the left, you don't, don't think that you're going to take that ship and then it's going to go like that, right? right. So we have over time um, just introduced some new things. I know one particular, I've talked to the youth ministry because it was hard for me to, to and for some to see Fritos as a snack, you know, for the kids. So they started making some changes. Um, we started incorporating more um, even food, food that w was I think the challenge is, um, um, what is it? Uh, uh, it goes bad, you know, like food spoiled, food that's spoiled. Like I can't think of the word that I'm looking for, but. And oh, perishables. Yes, perishables. So um, convincing them, it's okay. If the food goes bad, like that's good because then the food is living. Um, so that kind of started to change. And we do have folks now that within hospitality that are realizing this is the church that we are going to so we need to think about it because people are more apt to think you know about being clean and, and doing things the right way because that's how they're being taught and our ministry has done us uh, had some um some act uh, or events like um a like a how do you make smoothies and juices and you know things like that and alongside of the reasons why this is healthy and the reasons why you know you should think about redefine the um, sugar and what it means to you in your life and so we're educating where that's what the ministry is there for to get to the point now where we can get a farmer's market going and people can really care about thinking differently than going running to the grocery store but thinking about supporting local farmers like maybe if we had started that before having this this team this ministry that was going to um begin to change the course of the ship and how people think maybe it wouldn't have been as well i'm saying it wouldn't have been as successful we're actually going to have our first one uh, the first week first saturday in august because covid oh, kind of snatched our opportunity. We were supposed to start the first week in April and it was supposed to be going. Um, it's, it's Jeff for the church. We're all volunteering here, right? Um, I was assigned uh, a, and created a sub team that are managing the market, but we've got folks within the ministry and then even with- That's got to be a huge amount of work managing a farmer's market. It is, but you know, this market is not every day. You know, it's not- Routine. I mean, even still, like that's a lot, a lot to pull together and coordinate. It's a lot. So and good job. Thank you. Thank you. It's definitely taking time. So we're, we're excited about it. And, you know, um, we are, for me, I just, I kind of fought for a greater level of balance because a lot of times when people think farmer's market, they're like, oh, the, the veggies are going to... I'm like no, we're we're gonna have that, but um, even from the some farmers that I talk to, it's like the last thing we want is to have the the stand next to me on both sides is exactly what I have, you know. Local seasonal foods. It's like how many times can you see the same collard greens or the same, you know, um, eggplant or whatever it is uh, that you know they're they're growing all around you. You want variety, so we want seafood. We've got seafood. We've got meat. We've got uh, organic. Forgive me, my ge my uh, geography is terrible. Um, how far is Raleigh from the sea? I mean, it, where is the seafood coming from? It's uh, so we we are about an hour and forty five minutes or so. So oh, okay. we have we have water all you know around us. We've got the coast. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, Wilmington is not so far, you know, the ocean is right there. So it's not, not bad. We are, and that's the thing too, our zip code is a very, very good zip code for good food. Yeah. Yeah. And we're, we're, we're definitely blessed and fortunate in that way. Um, there's some that just can't get food like we can, you know. So, and the prices that you're finding for um, the regenerative meats at your farmer's market, I mean, how does it compare to grocery store? Is it something that you think the, the parishioners at your church are going to be able to afford or, you know, what do you think? So we are not at the level of regenerative meat at the market. Okay. Not, I, I, not even close. <laughs> the animals are getting feed, you know, so if you go to your regular farmer's market, it's probably not going to be it, 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 rare, if any, that you're going to have a regenerative farmer there. And, you know, and then some of them, you know, spray, you know, whatever. You got to ask questions, you know, even yeah. if you're at a market, um, ask questions. So it's like we just have farmers that have the mindset to get there, you know, um, and then some that are organic have the organic standards in place, uh, but it's still better than the grocery store. So we're not there with our market by any stretch of the imagination. Okay. Well, um, you know, you're just starting August 1st, right? right? So, you know, it's going to be a couple of years of evolution there, but that's so exciting and and really interesting. And I wouldn't, uh, well, I guess I would ask, uh, do you welcome people to uh, reach out to you with questions? Um, I'm sure there's some people, you know, who listen to this, who uh, are active in their church and maybe are interested in doing something similar. Could they reach Mm -hmm. out to you on, you know, the mechanisms of organizing a, you know, church ministry to do something like this? Absolutely. Um, please. I, I welcome that. I met whole life for you for not spelled out whole life for you on um, Instagram. Um, you know, I'm, I'm on Facebook, Facebook, uh, Janae Williams on Facebook. Uh, please reach out. Um, I, uh, I am me. Send me a message. I would love to help. Even if it's uh, regarding, I've got, uh, I've got a, a, a structure even for like a, what, what do I call it? Like a la carte coaching, if you want, you know, that we're all, up a coaching session for anyone that's interested I would, I would love to help that's what i'm here for and i'm really grateful um a day that you would even have me on your show and i i just appreciate everything that you do you know for the community and i'm so glad that we've got this network now and and even building from here so um keep on doing what you're doing i'm just doing thank doing- you i really appreciate that and wait, so you, you said before that you do life coaching, like, is that for real? And how can we, what kind of things do you coach on and how can we find you professionally? Yeah. So, um, certified life coach with health as a primary, cause I start there. Um, and really you can, if you just inbox me or, you know, find me in those, those modes that I mentioned, I appreciate that. Um, so, you know, please, uh, just message me if you're interested in any of that but yeah that's that's real and you know I just I just go with where the person is everybody's at a different place in their life and some people just need to get uh find their mission statement what is your mission you know why are you here how and I think number one is how do you get the drive to do the things and connect with your purpose how do you get that drive you know like we were talking about drive a lot today um that's what we need it's like what what are you driven to do like what you know what's your passion like when i cried over gmos <laughs> i was like what is what is going on with me if i what's wrong with me nothing's wrong it just means so much to me that people aren't you know just um aren't completely oblivious to their bodies declining without them knowing until it's too late or they have a disease like that hurts my feelings like the things that really just get you in the heart that's your part of your purpose so it's like just trying to get people to know that is a really good start so that's a lot of what you get when when you talk to me um you know folks folks just make a connection and then it's like so how are you eating you know how's your fuel because you want to be able to get a drive, do what you're doing. You can't do it on Twinkies or, you know, whatever. Yeah. 
means that's not good. Absolutely. Well, I'm definitely going to put that in the description box below. Um, so for sure, anybody watching this, uh, Janae, I mean, you've seen her personality. I think she is awesome. And uh, she would be a great, great person to go to for coaching. So, um, you know, definitely check that information out. And I'm going to put all of the, the contact information. So um, anything else that you would like to add that you think we haven't touched on? Hmm. Wow, we've touched on quite a bit. I think I, I, you know, got a lot of thoughts out there, um, not to necessarily overwhelm, but I think everyone, wherever you are right now, you know, is a, is a, it, you're at a good place to start. It doesn't have to be overwhelming. Just cut things out a little by little. If you feel that you have the need to do that, just to feel better, you know, just to be able to live a better life, you know, so um, I would just say that because sometimes people hear all of this and they're like, you know, or they'll hear hear some a label like keto or carnivore and just feel like, how am I going to do that? It's like, you know what? If you're drinking Coca Cola every day, I, I know a really great place to start. Yeah. Just start and then just start to learn and you know. So I, I guess that's the only thing uh, other than that that I will put out there is to be yeah. encouraged and know that you can improve incrementally. And, and not exactly. Exactly. I like that. And, you know, I always think like people think, oh, carnivore, like, what is that? And I'm like, everybody's had carnivore breakfast for years. It's called bacon and eggs. Yeah. So it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not hard and it's things that we like, you know, most people like bacon and eggs or at least the bacon part. So <laughs> yeah, it, it totally. I mean, these are things that people have been told for years that are bad for you. Yeah. I can't tell you how excited I was to hear that this is not bad. I threw that right. celery behind my shoulder so fast. I was like, give me the bacon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I 100% agree with you there. So um, that's awesome. Well, so thank you so much for sharing your story. It was really, really great to hear. And I, I, I think it, it will help so many people to just, you know, be able to relate to you and to, you know, to hear what you've been through and where you're going. And uh, we are all excited to see where you go. And I definitely want to bring you back and hear more about how, um, you know, how the, the farmer's market goes, that, like maybe later in the fall, you know, once it's gotten going for a bit. Okay. I love that. All right. Awesome. So I will talk to you soon. All right. Thank you, Ede. Thank you so okay. much.